Okay. Um, looks like it's being recorded here. Um, this is the World History Chapter 21 22 uh, study guide for the test. Uh, so I'm going to go through here and try to help you guys out a little bit. Uh, so let's take on uh, absolutism. Obviously, Chapter 21 was based around the idea of absolutism, uh, this idea that a ruler ruled by divine right and that there was no checks and balances against them. Um, you know, basically, they could do whatever they wanted. Now, of these, uh, one of the more powerful ones was Philip II, who was absolute monarch of Spain. And uh, he was a guy that got pretty wealthy off of, you know, all that stolen gold and silver from the New World. Um, remember, he was a defender of Catholicism. Uh, he was very Catholic and, and tried to force other European countries into being Catholic. Uh, Diego Valasquez was uh, a, a Spanish painter of the royal court. Uh, he specialized in painting the royal, royal family. Um, and, and some of the problems that Spain had was that it was really bad about strengthening its enemies by you know, buying from them. They would go out and, and instead of buying homegrown Spanish products, they're buying these cheaper French products and products from other countries, uh, which you know, put wealth into their economies. Uh, Rembrandt, you know, really a guy who used uh, lights and darks when it came to his paintings. Um, very famous Dutch painter, of course. Uh, you know, his paintings sell for quite a bit of money these days. Don Quixote was actually a uh, Spanish work by Miguel de Cervantes. And uh, it, what's really famous, it kind of paves the way for novels, modern novels. And so it's the first European novel, uh, Don Quixote. Uh, now, Spanish inflation was caused by, we talked about Philip II and you know the gold and silver coming over. Uh, so much silver comes over that um, it actually you know, drives up the prices of goods because people knew you were walking around with silver in your hands, basically. Uh, Henry of Nav Navarre, switching gears, were getting out of Spain and moving into France. Uh, Henry of Navarre was a guy that promoted religious tolerance, like with the Edict of Nantes, um, which you know declared religious freedom in France. Uh, he's a guy that was you know converts to Catholicism supposedly, but some people didn't believe it, and he ends up getting assassinated. Of course, knifed down in his uh, coach. Uh, skepticism was also an idea that emerged in this time because of all the the fighting and questioning about religious beliefs. Skepticism very simply was the idea that nothing could be known for certain. Uh, there was just no way of knowing uh, what came after and who was right and who was wrong and things like that. Uh, again, Edith Nantes, religious belief um, there in France. Now, Cardinal Richelieu, really what you need to know about that guy is that uh, he was very powerful he ruled really in place of a very weak Louis the Thirteenth, who was more interested in hunting and doing other things besides ruling. So he, he actually, you know, lived a pampered life, but he turned over a lot of power and authority to Richelieu, who worked for the Catholic Church. Now, eventually, we're going to get uh, Louis the Fourteenth who comes along, and he's going to put out the position of intendants. And intendants were common people; they weren't nobility, and their job was to collect taxes. And this was a job that had traditionally been done by the nobles uh, in France. And, and so it was a very powerful tool of theirs. And Louis takes it away, strips it away from them. Uh, so the intendants are collecting taxes. Uh, Boyars, that moves us into Russia. And those are just Russian nobles. Uh, and these guys that are going to have a problem when you make them cut their beard and try to dress them up like Western European pansies. Um, so m make sure you remember that Boyars. Ivan the Terrible, uh, he was the first absolute monarch that we talk about in uh, in Russia. Uh, he is a, a very powerful czar. He's the first czar. And he's a guy that uh, has a mixed legacy. There's some good things in the beginning, but once his wife dies, he loses it. Um, he, he ends up beating his daughter-in-law uh, to the point where she loses her child. Uh, he ends up killing his son, of course. Uh, all this happens after the worst thing uh, that makes his dark period, which is basically his wife getting killed. And he blames that on the boyars. Now, beyond Ivan, we get Peter the Great. And Peter the Great is set on westernizing and mo basically modernizing Russia. So he's going to leave out on this secret journey called the Grand Embassy, where he goes around and he works a bunch of different jobs in Western Europe. And he's basically still in the secrets of manufacturing centers and stuff and taking it back uh, with him to uh, Russia. Uh, geocentric theory moves us into the scientific revolution. Uh, it's first proposed by Copernicus, uh, and it goes against the church 
or I'm sorry, that's a heliocentric. A geocentric uh, was the old Aristotelian idea that the sun sat at the center of the universe and that the planets and the stars and the sun, moon, and everything revolved around the earth. Geo means earth. Now, Galileo, uh, he comes along and he's influenced by Copernicus who proposed the uh, heliocentric theory. And he's going to use the telescope and things like that to disprove some things. Um, so and Galileo eventually will be put under house arrest for uh, disagreeing with the church, basically. Now, Isaac Newton is another scientist who comes along in the scientific revolution. Uh, he invents calculus, but of course, he's most famous for his uh, Newton's laws of gravity, basically. Uh, British man, uh, one of the all-time greats. Um, and also happening around the same time is the Enlightenment. And, uh, you know, one of the guys that's not very enlightened as, as compared to the others is Thomas Hobbes, who believes that people are naturally wicked and, and selfish and that they've got to have an absolute monarchy. They've got to have a strong central government to uh, keep people in place, to keep social order, and that if left to their own devices, people would be crazy. Now, salons are something that happens first in France, but what they're, what they're very important for is they spread these ideas of the Enlightenment, you know, these things like um, freedom of speech and religion and uh, the consent of the people is what runs the government. Um, salons are really going to help spread uh, Enlightenment ideals. Uh, Voltaire, of course, was very famous uh, French philosopher uh, known for his writing of books where he used satire to attack, especially church members, which uh, made him public, public enemy number one. Uh, they would end up uh, exiling him from France for two years, and he's the guy that uh, big time freedom of speech guy. Uh, what were some of the legacies of the Enlightenment? Uh, separation of powers, uh, freedoms of speech and religion, um, the idea that government is, you know, it happens through the will of the people. And the Enlightenment is the age of reason that we need to that we need to use reason and logic to govern ourselves. Uh, Copernicus, of course, was the guy who first proposed the heliocentric theory, and he publishes it, publishes it, and he doesn't care. He's on his deathbed anyway. What are they going to do to him? Uh, so, and it kind of got ignored until Galileo came along and and kind of uh, made it live once more. Scientific method. Uh, remember that this is the process that's going to um, help lead to scientific discoveries. It was first proposed by Francis Bacon and Rene Descartes. Uh, and then lastly, Louis XIV, he's the most powerful of all the absolute monarchs um, in history, uh, the longest reigning monarch in European history. He built the Palace of Versailles. He weakened the power of the nobles by uh, you know, doing things like creating the position of intendants, uh, building the Palace of Versailles and forcing his nobles to live there. Uh, he was also a patron of the arts. Uh, he loved ballet and operas and orchestras and stuff like that. Um, so there, he made France a cultural center of Europe, uh, but his legacy is going to be a little mixed as people were definitely ready to see him go. Uh, there were high taxes to pay for his many wars. That's it. Um, although it's a short answer, this should not be an overly difficult test. Um, as long as you can remember these people and these things, you should have it. Good luck.